Hey guys, my name is Lewis with Rocketstock.com and today we're going to look at correcting and basic grading in Resolve 15. There's not going to be a quirky angle or complex nature to this tutorial. We're simply going to cover correcting an image and then following along with my grade. If you're entirely new to filmmaking or color grading and feel slightly insecure about the process, this will be a great introductory video. So first, the difference between the correcting and grading. When you hear the term color correction, it's regarded to the process of correcting any rogue colors or tints that may have been picked up during the filming process and neutralizing the image to where it should naturally sit. If your camera shoots in a log or flat profile, then initially it may be void of contrast and saturation. Color correcting will get these colors back to how they were on location. Grading, on the other hand, is the creative process that will manipulate colors and tones to what isn't inherently true to the real world but it creates an atmosphere that pertains to the tone of the story or location. Or, quite simply, it just gives the film its own unique feel. Think CSI Miami, Gradient Sky. Now, before we start to correct and grade our clip, we have to think about the reality of what can be achieved and look reasonable. This is our base clip. It was filmed on a cold Welsh morning in early winter. The sky is grey, the leaves have fallen from the branches and the weeds have withered. It's not a very colourful image figuratively and literally. So we're not going to be able to make this look like a beautiful summer's day without destroying some element of the image data and also without it looking silly. So let's get started. One of the very first things we need to do is make sure our scopes are visible, especially the RGB parade, as correcting an image without these is like filming a scene without a monitor or recording sound without headphones. The RGB parade splits the red, green and blue components of the video signal into separate waveforms and displays the strength of each channel. In essence, if we have too much blue in the highlights, this is going to show us. The channels are aligned vertically in conjunction with the shadows, midtones and highlights. Naturally, the top of the graph is the highlight value, the bottom is the shadows, with the middle corresponding to the midtones. To give a visual example, if I were to lower the shadows, the red, green and blue values all lower to reflect the adjustment. Alternatively, if I were to introduce reds into the highlights, we can then see the red highlight value increase. This scope, in particular, can help identify problems your image may have. So let's reset those adjustments and now we can correct the image. To do this, we will be using the left palette, which contains the tools for primary adjustments. In particular, the lift, gamma and gain controls. These are where you're essentially going to be spending the most time correcting and creatively grading. The controls are split by tonal regions. Lift works with the shadows, gamma with the midtones, and gain with the highlights. Moving the color balance indicator towards red while using the gain controls will add red to that region only. Underneath, and equally as important, is the master wheel, and this will adjust the brightness of that tonal region. Due to the flat nature of the recorded format, first we need to introduce contrast, and we can see that in our scopes as the tonal range is very much centered within the midtones. I'm going to lower the shadows until the lowest value just about touches the floor and then I'm going to increase the highlights until these top values reach the top of the scope. If you ever see a solid white line in this scope, that means that there is an area of your image which is pure black or white and has no image data. In other words, you've overexposed or underexposed your shot and no amount of correction will bring the detail back. Now we have fundamental contrast to our image and with a dab of saturation, we're close to how the subject and location appeared while filming. However, there's a slight blue cast to the image. I said it was a cold day, but this blue is slightly unnatural and shouldn't be there. And again, we can see this information in the scope. The blue highlight value is somewhat higher than the red and green, and this tells us that the image isn't balanced correctly, but not to worry, it's a simple correction. Therefore, what we need to do is introduce a color that will cancel out the blue highlights. Now we could use the curves and select a blue curve and remove that from the highlight. However, I like to use the color balance wheels and what we need to do is introduce a color that will cancel out the blue highlight. And when we look at the color wheel, we can see that the opposite of blue is the red hue region. So I'm going to very slightly and slightly is the operative word push towards the red hue until we have balanced highlights. It doesn't have to be perfect and dead on the number, but near enough will help balance the image. And in fact, I can now see the highlights have a little more room. So I'm going to increase those again. So I would argue that this is pretty much how the location and subject looked when I was filming. If I open the vector scope and quickly qualify the skin, I can also see that it doesn't require any adjustment before grading. 
If this was for a generic YouTube clip that we wanted to be live within a moment's notice, then we could send this to the delivery page. But if it's not for a vlog or B-roll and it needs some creative application, now we grade the image. Color grading is an interesting area to teach because to some extent, you can't. Primarily for two reasons. To a certain degree, it's an art form which requires practice and a keen eye for color. And secondly, the specifics of every image are entirely different. You could follow my steps to the decimal and implement them on your clip and the grade would look different. In fact, if I was to shoot this exact scene two hours later and apply the grade I'm about to do, it would look different because the color values from the original image would differ due to the change in daylight. With color gradient, the concept is very much based on theory. And while I can't fully explain the theory aspect in just a handful of minutes, I can show you the practical elements of grading. So when you do understand the theoretical aspect, you'll know the basics of implementing your knowledge. But before we do, let's have a look at some of the basic tools available. We've already used the color balance wheels, but underneath we have a further selection of primary corrector tools, such as saturation and contrast. Or if I go to the second sub menu, we can see that we can change the temperature and tint. To the right and in the center palette, we have an abundance of different tools, such as curves, blur and sharpen, tracking, and so on. Today, I'm only gonna be using the qualifier, power windows, and tracking. The qualifier could be the most important tool we have in our arsenal. Now, it doesn't necessarily grade an image by itself, but what it will do is isolate an individual color for specific adjustment. For example, perhaps we wanna lower the saturation of this man's jumper, but if we were to lower the saturation here, it's gonna affect the entire image. So what we can do is select the qualifier, click the sweater to isolate the color, and if you don't initially see the selection, click this magic wand, and as you can see, we now have the sweater in the viewer well more specifically we have that hue which also encompasses other parts of the image but we'll talk about correcting that aspect when i grade it's also important to recognize that a lot of elements of grading work in tangent you'll obtain better results when using complementary colors but of course this is also dependent on the base colors available on location this is why set design and costume is important so now for the creative aspect this scene is for a theoretical crime drama. Overall, I want this scene to be cold, the skin tones to remain neutral, and we're gonna add a little creative flavor to the sky in the vein of Hannibal and True Detective. First, I'm gonna create a parallel node instead of a serial node. A parallel node essentially lets you apply overlapping adjustments at a single stage of the node graph. I'm using one to cool the entire composition and one to maintain the skin tone. Now, you could do this with a serial node and apply the skin tone first and then the cold adjustment second but when i do change the entire composition to be a little bit colder i do find it easier with a parallel structure first let's give this a chilling look when you want to adjust the overall tone of a correctly exposed image you ideally want to be moving the colors within the mid-tone region because as we can see on the scopes that's where the majority of the color information sits therefore i'm going to take the mid-tone color wheel which is gamma and introduce a touch of blue just a touch this already looks a lot grimmer than the initial image, a lot colder. We could, in theory, also change the temperature to make it cooler, but that will alter the white balance of the entire image, which is a bit different than just adding blue to the midtones. Next, I'm going to hop to the node above, and we want to maintain the skin tones against our cold grade. If we open the vector scope and activate the skin tone indicator, it'll give us an indication of where the skin tone should be. So with that open, let's use the qualifier to select the subject's skin, and we can see it's already pretty close on the line of where the skin tones need to fall. If we've pushed the mid-tones into the blue, we need to push the skin tones in the opposite direction while maintaining course for the skin tone indicator. Yet, as you can see, we have a problem. The qualifier hasn't isolated the skin tone correctly. Therefore, in the selection range tool panel, I'm going to select the add color range button to further isolate the skin tone. I can then make additional adjustments using the finesse settings underneath. But again, we have another problem. We have also picked up the foliage from the scene as it shares a similar hue value to the subject's skin tone. As a result, we need to do two things. First, create a power window around our subject's face. To do this, I'm gonna open the power windows tool, choose a window that is appropriate for this shot, and then we're gonna track the window to the movement of the subject. I'm gonna click the tracker and just hit analyze and resolve will do a fantastic job and making sure that the power window will stay close to the subject. With that complete, let's create a new serial node, Control S, for our sky adjustment, and we can take a look at what we've done so far. There's a slight variation to what we started with, nothing drastic, but the tone has certainly been changed. 
So we're going to add a little flavor into the sky. And to do this, we're going to use the qualifier once again and click anywhere in the sky region. There we go. Perfect. The sky in regard to the RGB parade obviously correlates to the highlights. Therefore, for an adjustment to the sky, we will need to be using the lift wheel. For the creative aspect, I'm going to push the lift into the yellows. It's not necessarily a natural look, but for this crime drama, it adds a unique feel. I like that. Okay. However, I can see that the highlights here have also caught an element of the historical display. Usually I wouldn't mind too much about highlights transforming elsewhere than the sky because in reality, if the sky is red, then the highlights elsewhere are likely going to be red. But here I think they might be too intrusive. So I'm going to create a square power window and remove the intrusive highlights. As the camera is locked down, I'm not going to need to use the tracker window for this node. To finalize this grade, I'm going to add another node and here I'm going to decrease the overall brightness, lower the saturation by five points and add some film grain to make the shot slightly grittier. This is the recorded image. This is the color corrected image. And this is the final grade. Some may question the need to correct an image when just a few moments later, we gave the sky a yellow tint and made the image colder. You need to think about correcting the image as you would lay the foundations of a house. Once those foundations and the internal structure is built, perhaps in a few years time, you can then expand upon the construction. The same goes for color grading. If you were to grade an image without first correcting, you would find obtaining a correct skin tone a troublesome process. Through this tutorial, you now know how to basic color correct, and hopefully you should have some key tips on color grading. Remember to subscribe and stay tuned for more color grading tutorials in the near future. Until next time.